invited to Britain the intention to travel overseas, across the ocean to shores unknown, to their motherland they would soon call home. Dark grey and clouded skies, some walking off the boat, some with apprehension, some with smiles, some wanting to cry for Britain, especially London, there was no streets paved with gold, like all the fantasy stories that they had ever been told. Instead of being greeting with warmth from this land called Mother, there were signs in the window so when all they wanted was a nice warm home. The signs were so unwelcoming and so cold. No dogs, no black, no Irish, it read. Some of them wondered, is this for me? Wow! For many, this was the first time they recognised such hostility. For colour and prejudice, this was never known. For back in the countries that they came from, everyone was family. Everybody they seemed to know. So this was a new beginning for this Windrush generation, as they're called now. But back then, they were just young travellers who had seen an advert that said, come and build up Britain after the war. And they felt that they would be coming to an opportunity. But now <laughs> they were being faced with a harsh reality. Many of them had to pile into their homes. They did shifts in the bed. As some finished one shift, the others lied and got to sleep, and then the middle shift, and then the night shift. They shared the kitchens, the bathrooms. They heard arguments. They had laughs. They couldn't even be welcome to worship when Sunday had come because many of them were used to back home going into what they called Sunday churches. When they came here, some of them who even were allowed to enter the churches were told, please don't come back. You're making everybody else feel bad because you're black. So they took to their front rooms of the houses where they could all gather. They prayed together, read scripture, and then quietly said, we're going to find a way to work this out. And this is what they did. So gathering together and making a plan, lots of the men, after working from Monday to Friday, would have a drink. It helped to lift their spirits up and then they would plan everything. The women would gather and cook and clean and work out rotors of how they would help each other with looking after the children. They had a system which they all called partner Han, which meant that they were able to save money so that they could eventually get a mortgage and independently live. This took quite a few years and every week as they got paid, they would go to the post office to make sure that at least a third of their wages was going back to home, to the Caribbean, to the land, to look after their parents, some of the children that they had left behind or their partners that they would soon be sending for. They were the first ones at work and the last ones to leave. They were the ones that were willing to go on their knees. They worked hard. They had manners 
And it didn't matter what names they were called, whether it was Nignog or Wog or Gollyweg go back home. They just endured it. They just took it. Eventually, their children would be the first that went to school here. And a lot of them would hear the negative criticisms whispered in their ear. Your child is struggling. They're not doing well. They're rude. They're lacking behind. And this was very hard for these parents to hear this. So they clubbed together in their community groups and they came up with a plan. Let's have Saturday schools. Let's have support for education. Let's let our children do the best that they can. Wow, this Windrush generation, these seniors of that time, they never gave in. They always found and came up with a plan. The Race Equality Council, some of them were the first to help create. It was an institution that would rise above the hate, above the discrimination and offer equal opportunity. Many of them took part in this because they felt they had a right to be free and equal, to be who they are. There were lots of firsts and the one to which there is so much pride is the day when the first black mayor of the UK, Lydia Simmons, she had two first, first being a woman and a black woman. And when she won the right to be the first mayor in the UK, it was such joy and cheers and celebration for one of them had made a difference. One of them was going to make a difference. One of them was going to have a voice. And because of this, they all felt that they won. And as she was robed in this gown, looking like royalty, <laughs> All she needed was a crown. But really she was crowned with their respect and crowned with their voice. But the robe that she was robed in, it looked so nice. It looked so nice. It represented pride. It represented that all of their hard work, there was one that they truly knew would have true justice on her side. And Lydia did her job not from a racial perspective or view. Lydia done her job because she knew what it felt like to be unjustly treated. And she wanted to make sure that everybody would be treated equally and fair. Robed in her gown and all her events, she was proud and so was her community because one of them had got this victory. And there are lots of little wins that many of this Windrush generation had made. But this is for Slough's history and this is some of what was said. <laughs>